Hi everyone, I'm John from Radford Mathematics, and in this video we're going to learn how to calculate the percentage error. For that, we're going to be using the formula that you see in the upper right hand corner of the screen, so you may want to make a note of that already. Now to learn how to use this formula, I'm going to work through two examples. And in fact, let me already write example one here for the first one. Now for this example, I want you to imagine for a second that I run a restaurant and I want to approximate how many customers I'm going to get next Saturday so I can order food in order to make sure I've got enough stock in my restaurant. So let's say I make an approximation and I say that next Saturday I'll have 50 customers. So I'm just writing approx as in approximation 50 customers. Now Saturday rolls by, I go through my entire lunch service and my dinner service and I realize that in fact I've only had 38 customers. And so the exact number of customers I actually had, so I'll just write exact here, was 38. And what I want to do is figure out how much of an error I actually made with my initial approximation. And I want that error to be expressed as a percentage. More specifically, I want it expressed as a percentage of the exact number of customers I had. Because I'll then be able to draw conclusions like, my approximation was in fact this percentage more than the exact value, or this percentage less than the exact value. And that's exactly what the percentage error allows us to do. So let's see how to use this formula. First of all, as I read this formula going from left to right, on the left hand side we have this Greek letter here, which we call var epsilon, and we use it to refer to the error. Now that's equal to this expression which is written inside these vertical bars which remember refers to the absolute value. Now this expression is a fraction and on the numerator I have this v sub a which I've written here is the approximate value. So in the example we have here the approximate value is the initial approximation I made. That was the 50 customers. So v sub a equals to 50. And I take away from that v sub e. Now v sub e is the exact value we have. So back in our example here, v sub e would be the 38 customers I actually had on Saturday. Next on this fraction's denominator we have v sub e again, so that again would be 38. Outside of the absolute value we multiply the result by 100%. So let's see how this works out. Copying this formula and replacing v sub a and v sub e by their respective values, we get this, var epsilon equals to, open up an absolute value, v sub a, so remember that's 50 here, that's the approximation I had made, minus v sub e, which remember is the exact value. So in this case, that's the exact number of customers I had, and that's 38, and that's over v sub e again, so that's 38 again. And I close this absolute value and I multiply that by 100%. Now, 50 minus 38 is 12, so this turns into the absolute value of 12 over 38. And again, I multiply that by 100%. And now you can go ahead and check, but using my calculator and rounding to three significant figures, I find that 12 divided by 38 is 0.316. So this becomes the absolute value of 0.316. And again, I multiply that by 100%. Okay, now what do we do with this absolute value? Well, put simply, if the number inside the absolute value is positive, then the absolute value does absolutely nothing at all. In other words, we can just get rid of it and ignore it completely. So here, because 0.316 is positive, we can just get rid of these absolute values. And we can state that this equals to 0.316 times 100%. Finally, multiplying 0.316 by 100, we can state that the percentage error is equal to 31.6%. And that's the answer. So going back to my restaurant, when I said that I would have 50 customers on Saturday, the percentage error I made there was 31.6%. And because my approximation was greater than the exact value, I could say that I overestimated the number of customers I would have by 31.6%, which is a lot and would probably lead to lots of wasted food. That being said, let's look at a second example. And I'll just write here example 2. Now in this second example, let's say I'm interested in finding out how much error I make when I approximate the number pi by 3. 
And I should say, I do that quite a bit. For instance, let's say I had to calculate 7 times pi, and I don't have a calculator handy, then I would quickly just say, well, 7 times pi is roughly equal to 7 times 3, so that's roughly equal to 21. But how much error is there when I make approximations like that? Well, to answer that question, we can use the percentage error formula again. Now, in this case, though, my approximation, so my approximation, would just be 3. Remember, I'm saying that pi is roughly equal to 3. My exact value, on the other hand, the exact value of pi, well, is just pi. So for our formula here, v sub a would be 3, and v sub e, well, that would be pi. So just to be clear here, this 3 here, that's v sub a, that's equal to 3, and my exact value, v sub e, equals to pi. Okay, now that we've made a note of these two values, let's go ahead and calculate the percentage error. So again, I write var epsilon equals to the absolute value of my approximation, so that's 3, I'll write that here, that's 3, minus the exact value, which is pi, over the exact value, pi. I close the absolute value, and I multiply that by 100%. Now, because it's not actually possible to know the exact value of pi, remember, it's an irrational number that goes on forever with no repetition, what I'll use as my value for pi is the value I have built into my calculator. And so plugging this fraction inside my calculator and rounding to three significant figures, I find that this is equal to the absolute value of negative 0.0451. And again, I multiply that by 100%. Now I take care of this absolute value. In this case, the number inside the absolute value is negative. And when that happens, in other words, as soon as you have something negative inside an absolute value, what it does is turn it into its opposite. And the opposite of negative 0.0451, well, it's 0.0451. In other words, its corresponding positive number. So I can go ahead and state that this is equal to 0.0451 times 100%. Finally, multiplying 0.0451 by 100, we can state that the percentage error is equal to 4.51%. And that's the answer. In other words, when I approximate pi by 3, the percentage error I'm making is roughly 4.5%. And I could actually say more. Because my approximation 3 is in fact less than pi, when I approximate pi by 3, I'm underestimating by roughly 4.5%. And there we go. That's how we can calculate percentage error and how to use the percentage error formula. And that's it for this tutorial.